Today we're going to be looking at creating this kind of pokeball effect which I used in my latest video. So let's get to it. First import your footage and let's trim this the way I want it, like so. And uh, then I'm going to add my pokeball footage and let's call this group pokeball. And let's call this other group base. And I'm not gonna go too much into detail on how you add the Pokeball to the shot, but the main thing you need to know is that you choose a frame where you want the impact to happen, and then you animate the ball dropping, then bouncing a little bit from the hit, and then falling. But we're gonna focus more on turning me, or turning the character into energy and getting sucked into the ball. So now that you have your ball animated, we're gonna make the character's movement to slow down as the ball hits it. So let's go to frame where you want the impact to happen and add a set speed for that frame. Put it right there and let's put the speed around 30 and this is in time to 3. So now the ball hits the character and the movement slows down. And we want the movement to first slow down and then to stop. So go to the frame where you want the movement to stop and add a hold frame for that. So now we have movement slows down and then it stops. Right. Then let's make a new group, put it below the Pokeball effect, Pokeball group, and let's call this effect. Let's make a copy out of the base video and put it into the effect, and let's call this video red. And let's make another duplicate out of the base video and remove the whole frame and set speed from that. And let's go to the point of the video where I ran out of the frame. It is important that you shoot the video the way that you have just the background. This helps a lot in post. So let's put the video in right from there and there we have our clean plate. And let's call this clean plate. Now let's go to the red and go to the frame where the impact happens. And now what we want to do is we want to mask the character out of the video. So we have just the, just the character in this red video and we get the background from the clean plate. So go frame by frame and mask out the character's shape. And you don't have to be too precise, but just get around, just get around the shape and go to the point where the movement stops and there you have there you have your red layer all set up like so and next now let's go to the clean blade and make it fade in so the transition from the base video to the clean blade is smooth and you don't notice it make it to the point where the movement stops and fade it back in and now if we take a look at the red layer, we see that we have only the character from the from the video and we're gonna get the background from the clean plate. And that's what we want. Now let's go to the library, color correction and channel mixer. And put the channel mixer's red alpha all the way up and let's add a glow go to the glow and put the glow amount radius to 4 opacity to 0 0.9 threshold to 0 0.5 and softness to 0 0.3 and of course play around play around with the numbers these aren't exact put them as you want them this just adds a little bit of softness and stylizing to it. Let's add a glint and put the exposure to 2.3, softness to 14% and a glow amount to 2.5. And it's a, it adds a nice nice touch to the effect. And let's go to the red and fade it in within the time when the character's movement stops. Like so. So it fades in 
the character moves and it fades into red. That's what we want. And let's go to the mask and one thing we're gonna do to it is add a little bit of roundness to it and feather it a touch. It was a little too sharp looking right now, so now it looks a little bit nicer. Like that. And now let's go to the clean blade. Make a duplicate out of it and add it for the effect layer. Put it below the red and copy all the mask and the filters from the red and add it for the clean blade copy. And now what we have is just the shape of the character and all the filters. Let's go to the red and go to the point where the opacity hits 100, go 3 frames ahead and then a bunch of frames ahead and fade that red out, like so. So now we can see the character turns red and then fades out into this energy. And we're gonna actually call this video energy. Let's go to the red and go to the point where the opacity hits zero. And let's go to the mask of the energy. Hit hit the keyframe on the control points and let's go ahead for, for like seven or eight frames. And now we're gonna animate all of the control points moving inside to the pokeball. And I'm not sure if this is the easiest way of doing this, but this is how I made this. So move all the control points into the Pokeball and now it looks like that. Which looks pretty stupid. <laughs> but, but we're gonna make this animation look better by going frame by frame and adjusting the energy, making it look more living. And we have one problem, we have the energy layer showing right there when the ball moves away and we're gonna fix it by going to the frame where the where we can see the energy layer anymore and let's hit O and we're, we're done with that problem, we don't have that energy showing anymore. And now we have this, which is already looking like a pokeball effect and now we're gonna start adding things to it to make it look nice. Let's add a new group and put it below the effect group. Let's call this light. And now go to the library and generators, add a color solid for that. Let's put the color for this mm, somewhat like dark red, something like that. Let's add a circle mask for this layer, like so and actually convert it to points so I can control the layer better and make it something like that. Now go to the feather, put the feather all the way up to 410 and opacity to opacity to 38. And let's go to the color solid and keyframe to fade in within a couple of frames. like that and let's call this base light and let's go ahead and add another color solid and put this a little bit brighter red than the last one put it right there where the other one was let's go to the energy layer and copy the mask from that layer so copy and go to the color we added right there and paste that mask for that and let's put the feather to around 50 the opacity is 49 and what that gives us, it gives a really nice edge for our energy like so and let's call this edge light and fade it in as well as the last one so one more thing and this is just about the same, we're gonna add a light for the ball and then we're gonna keyframe the base light to move within the energy itself and then we're gonna fade out the lights to go away. And I think these colors we added make a great difference on making the effect seem like it belongs to the scene. And now let's add another group and place it below the Pokeball group and let's call this group Sparks. 
And now I'm gonna import this spark animation I made earlier. It looks like this. And I'm gonna add a retiming set speed to it, make it a little bit faster, make the speed to around 142. And now let's scale it, scale it the way I want it, make it a little bit smaller and place it where the impact happens. So it adds nice little touch for the effect, like so. And I'm also gonna add a clint for that, so it pops up a little bit more. Now we have one more problem, if we take a look, it looks like the energy is not going inside the ball, it rather looks like it's going behind the ball. And we're gonna fix this by making a duplicate of the Pokeball and masking it so the, we mask only the top part of the Pokeball, like so. And make the mask a little bit rounder. And then we're gonna copy the energy layer and place it on top of the pokeball layer we just made where we have only the top part masked. Remove all the keyframes, remove the mask and make a new mask for it, place it right there and let's go frame by frame and animate it so it looks the way we want it. And now if we take a look at it, it looks like the energy is going into the ball and not behind the ball. And that's exactly what we want and that looks pretty nice. And one more thing we're gonna add for this is add a new group. Let's call this energy waves. Let's go to the library, generators, caustics and add it for the group. And for the caustics we're gonna put the size to 0 0.07, speed to 0 0.8, refraction to around 156 and brightness to 48. And then we're gonna go to the energy video and copy the mask it has. So copy and go to the, go to the caustics and paste. And for the mask we're gonna put uh, feather it a little bit to the, for the minus and put the blending mode to screen and let's go ahead and add a soft focus to it make it a little bit softer like so and make it fade in as the effect starts and actually the color needs to be quite white so you can see it well so now we're pretty much done and as you can see the caustics really bring this effect to life and remember to turn on motion blur from the render options, it makes this effect look a bit more organic. So here we have it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for watching. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And until next time, bye!